wonderful to see all of you here because we are all now faced with an extreme crisis. I speak to you with the conviction and devotion of a lifetime to the welfare of Israel. This means we have to stop the suicidal agreement that permits Iran to build a nuclear infrastructure. It is effectively the stopping of a terrorist state from going nuclear. What do you hear in Iran? Death to America, death to Israel, death to Jews anywhere. Their mobs chant it, their leaders mean it. This was made clear by Ali Khamenei, Iran's spiritual, spiritual leader, who in a very recent speech said, we will humiliate America, death to Israel and death to America. This is a wake-up call that should sober the American public. He said, trade will not change Iran. The lifting of sanctions isn't going to make Iran a moderate country. So it is a false hope that lifting sanctions will make the regime of the Ayatollah more accommodating. They are now stronger, and it is almost impossible to placate the extremists, according to the New York Times. So, can Iran be trusted? You only have to... You only have to ask the question to know the futility of it. Look at their history of defiance and deceit. Look, listen to the Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, and the Emirates, and their hostility to Iran. As Israeli Prime Minister put it, when Arabs and Israelis agree, it is worth paying attention. Every day of the next 59, we have to make our voice heard in the Congress. It's called on to make a judgment as faithful as any in modern history. The deal does not avoid war. On the contrary, it feeds the flames of war and makes war with Iran more likely. It inspires any number of Arab countries, Saudi Arabia, Arabia and Egypt, to race to get nuclear weapons on their own. What we have here are the seeds of a vast transformation of the balance of power away from America's friends and towards America's enemies, and the United States must not contribute to that. It marks a potential turning point in American engagement in the Middle East that pivots from building regional security with a team of longtime allies such as Israel and the Sunni Arab states such as Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt in favor of a balance between those allies and our longtime nemesis, Iran. Also, an imperial subversive Iran will not have to pay for this huge strategic gain by giving up its terror and subver subversion. The only payment that Iran makes for this huge strategic gain is postponement of its nuclear ambitions for a number of months. The administration must explain and spell out the logic of this strategic balance between our old allies and our potential new one, Iran, that this agreement seems to imply. We are told that it won't happen, that the agreement cuts off every pathway to the bomb. Okay, let me therefore put the record, on the record, the most authoritative voice. This is President Rouhani, who negotiated this deal with our tireless Secretary of State, John Kerry, and the, and the fight and the five big powers plus Germany. This is President Rouhani speaking back in Tehran after the handshakes in Vienna. At first, the United States wanted us to be limited to 100 centrifuges. Now we will have 6,000. They, that's the United States, wanted restrictions to end some 25 years. Now it's eight. They, the United States, first said we could only have IR-1 centrifuges now we can have IR-678 advanced centrifuges. They said, that is the USA, that the heavy water plant at Iraq was to be dismantled. Now it will remain with heavy water under these conditions. That said, that is the United States said, our nu their nuclear plant in Fordo had to be cl cl closed. Now they will have a thousand centrifuges there. Whatever we decide about the nuclear deal, we are letting the Iranian tiger out of the cage. 
we are ready to feed the beast by approving the, rela the release of $140 billion in frozen assets without any commitment on how it will be spent. What are we looking at? A day after Iran and the world power shook hands on this deal, Rouhani did a little bragging. No one can say Iran surrendered, he said. The deal is a legal, technical, and political victory for Iran. It is an achievement that Iran won't be called a world threat anymore. Hey, if that was their ambition, it was easy to make good. Stop encircling Arab states while inciting their Shiite populations. Stop menacing Israel with funding of your proxy Hezbollah installations with more than 100,000 rockets. Stop joining with Qatar in rebuilding the tunnels from Gaza. Stop the heinous war of words, the primitive, the primitive blood libel of Jews. Stop to kill Jews whenever they may be and wherever they may be, not to mention inconvenient Arabs and Kurds. As it is, the sanctions are set to end against Iran. Forget the snapback President Obama told us would happen at any breach. These sanctions took years to put in place and have run out and will have run out after 10 years. Maintaining that will be very difficult. Only Congress can now stop what I believe will be an unmitigated disaster. But whether Congress votes yes or not, there is urgent work for this administration. Our friends among the Arab nations, along with Israel, feel betrayed. The danger to them, to the United States, and the wounds to our long friendships are such that our partners are looking for two things. A pushback against Iranian arrogance and deeper relations with America. I will quote Winston Churchill, who spoke to the Congress of the United States after Pearl Harbor. What kind of a people do they think we are? We say no, and I ask you to say no along with us. Thank you.